Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Multi-Threading. In the last video, we got our promised future shenanigans all kind of hacked up here. And uh, it's working. It's working okay. It's a little, you know, it's not as smooth. It's not as sexy as we would like, but it's a beginning. So where, what are the next steps? Well, uh, for one thing, we want to automate a lot of this process of, you know, ushering a promise to a worker thread and breaking off the future and everything. And we want the, the ability to pass it just a function that takes normal parameters and returns a normal value. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing is we want to be able to use this with our existing thread pool. And the way we're going to do both of those things at once is we are going to create our new task. So we had the simple redefinition of std function. But we're now going to create a task for real. So we'll go, where is it? We'll put it right before thread pool. All right, so here's the thing about task. It's going to be dealing with things like the promise, the future, and they're all templated on T, which means there's a bunch, there can be a bunch of different static types. But task has to be usable with thread pool, which can't deal with all those different static types. A worker must be able to deal with any task you throw at it. And if you make the task templated, that is going to break that. So in task somewhere, we're going to have to erase the type information about our task, the promise in the future templated parts of it. So the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to wrap it the same way we were wrapping it before with function void. And this will, we'll call this our executor. And so inside of whatever function we fill in here, it is going to be dealing with all of the, the templated parts. And the outward facing interface is just going to be void. And that will be, you know, compatible with all the workers, no matter what kind of uh, task we're dealing with. All right. So the real question is, what do we put in this executor? This is where all that templated type information is going to come in. So we're going to create a templated uh, constructor. We're going to make it private, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second. But we're basically going to have three things. We're going to have the type of the function, the task function, the type of the promise, and a parameter pack for all the parameters that can be passed to the function. So we template our task constructor f function. Don't know why I put p in here twice. A for arguments, p for promise, f for parameters. There we go. Okay, so and yeah, we're going to use, of course, universal references for our perfect forwarding goodness. And here is where we set our executor. Now we know obviously something about the executor. We know that it has to have a signature that takes in no parameters. And yet we have parameters, right? We have arguments for the function. Mm, so how do we resolve these things? Well, the answer is we capture. We're going to capture in all of this templated stuff, and then it will be wrapped up in the std function void, and type will be erased. So yeah, we do perfect forwarding of our function and our promise now. The arguments is a little tricky. How do we capture a parameter pack? This is the first time I've ever done this too. Uh, but we do dot 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 args is equal to, and then we just do std forward a args. Note that we don't do a dot 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 here, not allowed or required, just here. And that's how you. That's apparently how you do that. All right. And then what do we do in the executor? Well, it's quite simple. The executor has two jobs: uh, execute the function with the arguments and then take the return value of that function and set the result on the promise. So we do promise dot set result and we call the function and we pass it the arguments. Now, because we're calling set result on the promise, we are modifying the promise. Uh, so we cannot have an immutable lambda here. So we got to say mutable. That is important. And there you go. So there's our executor. We have now erased all this type information by capturing it in the lambda. 
Now in the public interface of task, let's create a static function that allows you to make a task. So again, we're taking in function type and arguments, but not the promise because the make function actually going to create the promise and then pass it into the task constructor. So we create a promise. Now the promise type is going to be the return type of F. So we can get that information by using type info. So there's a little boy called invoke result T and you pass it in callable and then you pass it in the types of the arguments, the parameters used to call it, and it will give you what type is returned from this function. So we want a promise of that type and we will call it promise. Now let's break the future off that promise. So we'll go future is equal to promise dot get future. All right, so now we have the promise and the future. What we want to return from this function, notice I made it auto here. Uh, what I want to return from the function is two things. I want to return the task because we're making a task, but I also want to return the future that is associated with that task. So I actually want to return two things and we're going to do that by returning them as a pair. So returns did make pair. And the two things we want are we're going to create a task and that we are going to do, we're going to forward basically all the things into the task. So we forward the universal reference things and we just move the promise that we created here locally. And then we are also going to std move the future into here. So we create a pair that has a task and a future. And there you go, we've got this make function. We give it a function, some optional arguments, and it's gonna spit out a task and a future that we can use. Now, task holds this function. We need a way of executing that function. We'll just use the idiomatic way, which is the booby operator, uh, executor, execute. And what else? I guess we would like to fulfill the general interface of a function. So function, like this guy, it has obviously the operator to invoke it. It has a bool to say whether it's empty or full. If we're going to allow the case of an empty task, then we should also have the ability to construct a default constructed empty task and to move tasks. But we don't want the ability to copy tasks. Tasks will not be copyable. So here we have, you know, lots of constructors and assignment guys all deleted or defaulted or implemented as you would expect. All right, so let's test this out. Uh, so we have our little test for promise future. Let's do a little test for our task. Uh, so we do auto. We're going to do a little um, structured bindings here. Task future. We're going to destructure the std pair get a task and future out of TK task make. So we're going to make a task. Um, we're just going to make it a simple function that takes an int and returns an int. So we'll just return x plus four. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and we'll, yeah, we'll make it asynchronous. So let's uh, do a little sleepy, a little sleepy weepy. Make this one a little shorter so we're not wasting my time here. Okay, and there you go. Now, task has this thing takes in parameters, so we got to give it the parameters, which of course is going to be 69. Ah, and Visual Studio messing my messing with my jive. Okay, so now we got this task. Let's do std thread. We're gonna launch a thread with this task, so we'll std move our task. And because task has, um, you know, the function operator implemented, we can just use it directly with a thread and it'll work. And we'll just detach that. And then we are going to std c out. Bob is your uncle. Let's build this bad boy. Hopefully it doesn't blow up, but it might blow up. Set result is not a member of this bad boy because I believe I called it set here. So we'll just, uh, we'll just fix that right now. And we have success, we run it, and we should see 69, 420, 69, there you go. So it works, which is nice, always a bonus. And you can see here now, we have the ability to create a task from just a, just a plain old function. Takes in parameters, returns values, 
We can inject those parameters as we like. And once we call make, we get a task and a future. We can throw that task to a thread and we can use that future to get the result when it's available. Beautiful. Now, next step, of course, is we want to be able to use this in our thread pool. Now you notice that it compiled, so that means that it is technically compatible already with the thread pool. I mean, because thread pool is using task, right? So it compiles, it's statically compatible with the thread pool. I don't know if we actually need to change anything, if it's gonna break, but we can try. We can give it the old college try, so KU. And that's a very nice thing. We implement the same interface and we get the uh, the same thing only it's not all right so run here we go pool run takes in a task right but this isn't a task so we actually want to change the run function of our thread pool we no longer want to take in a task we want to be able to just run a plain old function and the uh, the implementation details of creating a task are handled by the thread pool so how do we do that? Well, I think that is a great topic for another video. So here's where I'm going to call it. Make this one nice and short, uh, uncharacteristic of me. And when we come back in the next video, we are going to get our thread pool working with our new task system. And it's going to be beautiful. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++ multi-threading.